So what is the most effective treatment for tinnitus or tinnitus? My name is Paul Toby. Thank you for joining me. And however you pronounce it, if you have tinnitus, then first of all, let me say I'm, I'm very sorry for that. that. That can be very hard on your life, especially if you're a newcomer to tinnitus. I personally have had it since January the 6th, 2002. So that's a lot of years to have it. And I don't say that I suffer from tinnitus anymore, but I still have it and there are ways to manage it. So in this video, I'm going to talk about my own personal experience in managing tinnitus and some of the effective treatments that you can try. And we're going to get started in just a second. All right, today we're talking about the most effective tinnitus treatments. I'd like to start off, however, with the causes of tinnitus because many people come to tinnitus at one point in their life and they don't necessarily know how it happened. So here are some of the main causes. Obviously, exposure to loud noise. If you're a musician, and obviously we're posting this on a music channel, then it's very common for you to get tinnitus at some point in your life. Now, I'm not saying that you will. I'm just saying exposure to a loud piano, like a grand piano on a constant basis, which is part of my issue. And also I had a ride cymbal in my ear for many years from various jazz drummers, also playing in clubs and just exposure to loud music in general is a real problem. That coupled with decongestants, in, which I took on January the 5th, 2002, I think caused my tinnitus. Now, all decongestants come in a package with a little piece of white paper that basically says may cause ringing in the ears. And at what point you're taking these in conjunction with loud noises could trigger tinnitus. And once you have it, you may not ever be able to get rid of it. I'm not saying that to lower the bar. I'm just saying that to let you know that the, the biggest and most effective treatment for tinnitus is to never get it at all. And then of course there's brain injuries and accidents and other things that can affect it. But we're not here to talk about causes. We're here to talk about effective treatments. And from my own personal experience, and if you wanna read about my story, by the way, there's an article that I'm gonna put in a link below to the American Tinnitus Association article that, that talks about my story. And it, it's actually pretty interesting. I, I suggest you go read that. But I've got essentially uh, five things that you can do that can help you. All right, so he here are my five things. And again, this comes from my own personal experience. Right, number one, distraction. <laughs> Because tinnitus typically doesn't have a cure, it's not something that you can just go to your ENT and get a drug and it, it fixes it. It's not like other diseases. It's actually dis-ease. And it's triggered by your nervous system and your fight or flight reaction to sound in the head. And the problem with that is if you continue to focus on it, it gets typically worse. Stress and all of those things that contribute to tinnitus volume. So one of the big things is distraction. And what does that mean? It means go find a project. Find something you love to do, make a big goal out of it and go do that. Because I can tell you as I'm making this video, there is ringing in my ears, but I'm not paying any attention to it because I'm focused on helping you. So if you find a project that helps other people and you're into it and you enjoy it, that's probably one of the best things you could ever do for tinnitus because you're focused on something you love and you're not focused on the sound in your head and the stress that that creates. And by the way, stress is the amount of energy that you put into resisting your situation. And so the more you resist tinnitus and the more you cry foul, the louder it will get. And I'm speaking from more than 20 years experience here. All right, number two, Find a sound rich environment and spend your time there. So what does this mean? Well, for example, I use pink noise on my cell phone. 
I can actually put a link down below. If you search on YouTube for various frequencies of your tinnitus, and if you don't know what your frequency is, go to your ENT and they'll do uh, an audiology test and they'll let you know what your frequency is and you plug that into YouTube. And there's a lot of people that have created these sound loops to create a sound rich environment to distract you from the sound. In, in my particular case, I keep it on my cell phone and essentially whenever it's starting to bother me, I just, it's called tinnitus pink noise. I just press the button and it starts to play. I'm not sure if you can hear that through the microphone, but it's playing right now. So I'm gonna shut that off because I don't want it to be too distracting for you. But that's what I mean by sound rich environment. If you've got other sounds that are more soothing than the noise in your head, then your resistance to that sound is less, less stress and the volume will typically go down. Number three, there is something that I've discovered recently called lipoflavonoids. I'm also gonna put a link down below to uh, check that out on Amazon or maybe another website. Uh, but it's something that I take a couple times a day. It comes in a pill format. It's basically a natural medicine that is supposed to promote ear health. I don't actually know the science behind it. I don't even know how they came to develop it, but I do know this after taking it for a week or so, it will gradually lower volume. Now it may not work every single day, but you'll have probably less volume days more often than more volume days. It's not gonna cure it, it's not gonna get rid of it, at least it hasn't for me, and I've been doing it for over a year, but it does tend to help, and whenever I stop for a significant period of time, stop taking the, the pills um, or the, the supplements, I tend to start getting more volume in my head and more stress, and it's just this vicious loop that you get into. So lipoflavonoids, it's gonna cost around $20, 20 to $25 a month, depending on what currency you are. Mine's Canadian, so it's around $25 a month. Uh, and I think it's totally worth it because even if it lowers it like 30%, that's better than nothing. So check that out. Uh, number four, this is something that I've come to learn over the years that, that has helped me the most. Yes, distraction is important in finding projects, but also this law or universal law has helped me significantly. It's called the law of detachment. And in the law of detachment lies the wisdom of uncertainty. So what does that mean? Well, first of all, wisdom can only come from years of experience. And as somebody who has had tinnitus for many years, I have recognized that again, the more resistance that I put into everything, not just tinnitus, but the more I resist situations and circumstances and problems and all of the things that drive us crazy or make us a little stressed out or a lot stressed out as it were, I tend to go around those things. I tend not to, or at least more now than I used to, I, I tend to more now just let it be part of the law of detachment. Let it flow around me or through me or downstream. And I, I try not to resist those situations. I'm just like, well, this is another situation. It'll come, it'll go. I do that at work. I do that in my business. I do that on the bandstand. I do that when I'm recording. Deep breaths and mantras and things that keep me calm and centered and grounded and authentic and in the moment and in the now. This is the law of detachment. I've actually written articles about that. You can actually search for Google, in Google for Paul Toby law of detachment and read about that and what it means. It can be extremely helpful because resistance is futile. And the more resistance you put into tinnitus, the worse it's gonna get. So the law of detachment can really help you here. All right, finally, in the scientific community, there are a couple of recognized therapies, one of which I've completed, uh, which didn't actually help me. Um, and the other one I, I don't really know much about. I've actually started learning about it recently, but 
it involves sort of group therapy, which I've sort of tried before, but it wasn't also helpful to me as well. But you might want to check both of these out. So the first one is tinnitus retraining therapy. What is that? It is essentially noise generators like hearing aids that you wear and it emits a pink or white noise or whatever frequency that you have. And then over time, you're supposed to be able to lower the volume over a couple of year period. And then eventually your tinnitus will sort of even out and you can stop wearing the noise generators. Again, I did that for two entire years and it had no impact on me whatsoever. And it's quite expensive. Uh, to the tune of, you know, a few thousand bucks or more. And depending on your financial wherewithal, that might not be an option. But what I can tell you is, uh, for me, it didn't work, but for many people it does. So it's called tinnitus retraining therapy. You might want to check that out. And the last one is progressive tinnitus management or PTM for short, progressive tinnitus management. Again, it involves a therapist and, and some other things that you do, which, which may be beneficial. I have no idea. It's just one of the recognized treatments for tinnitus that's kind of popular right now. So those two things. So again, what is the most effective tinnitus treatment? In my experience, it tends to be a combination of distraction, sound-rich environment, lipoflavonoids, and practicing the law of detachment. I hope this is helpful for you. If you uh, have any questions or comments about this I'll try to include some links below, but again, anything that you want to talk about, just post it in the comment area below. And of course, like the video and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel. That'd be awesome. And have a great tinnitus free day. Thanks for spending a little time with me. It's Paul Toby. This is a fairly new YouTube channel and we'd be really grateful if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. So we'll be adding about five videos a week, just like this one. The videos are mainly focused on technical skills development, recording tips, and even professional and business development for musicians like you who want some help from a professional musician like myself. So I've toured 17 different countries, made eight albums, was signed to a really good label, and made a full-time living as a professional artist. So I know and I'm confident that I can be a great resource for you. Subscribe now and I'll see you in another video.